it's the gift. No, I, I, you know, the, 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 it's a, you know, it's wonderful what you're saying. And, and, you know, the disease is dis-ease, you know, the, yeah. the, the, and, and, and of course for the, for the logical mind, uh, that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, but I, I actually want to read you something just that I wrote down one of the questions that you, you, <laughs> it's very, very interesting that uh, one of the questions I was going to ask you, you can't separate stress from the environment, the stress of the parents, is passed on to the kids and the stress creates fight or flight hormones from the adrenals. Over time, it gives to heart disease and the diviculitis and the spastic colon and, and uh, also Crohn's disease, um, thins your bones. Um, and, and when you, but when you engage with students and you just have a nice conversation, what, what's interesting is that the body relaxes. I, I'm just, just writing this down. Cortisol and adrenaline levels plummet, and they all feel at ease. Okay, so that's that's clear. It's, we 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 biologically know all of this. This is nothing. This is not some fanciful idiot yogi making this up. It's just <laughs> it's basic human biology. So the question, my question is this: Why does society, governments, we have so many medical psychological advisors, create the opposite? do and create the opposite as they know the effect of this because the site you know the, the 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 pathology of a person cannot be you know separated from their environment you know it's you say well we know all this it's not like we don't know it we know what yeah. stress happens on rats there was a uh, just before if i may jump in just finish this bit i'm sorry i'm, I'm i know i talk a lot um <laughs> but there was this famous experiment i think in the 70s in america which was basically a, a, a cage of rats and there was two containers one with fresh water and one with water laced with heroin and all the rats went to the one with heroin so then after a while they took all the, the rats out they redecorated the same cage with everything that rats love little walkways bridges all these sort of things and they put the, exactly the same bottles back in, one with fresh water, one with laced with heroin. None, not one single rat went to the, the one with, with heroin. So it's a very, very interesting thing. In fact, if it works with rats, what does it do with human beings? You know, our environment, but, but not, I mean, because I know Glasgow and, and I know some of the, you know, the, 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 the really bad ends of Glasgow, and I know how, you know, in Belgrade and in, in the West Bank, bad environments create stress. But the caveat is that when you sit in circle and you sit and you support your brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter about the environment. You create, a you know, it, that's the nourishment, that's the nurturing, I, I believe. And it, it's got me through personally several times. And I know that's how you work. So I wanted you to, that, that was a long question to yeah. <laughs> however you want to answer it. Yeah. Uh, Do you know what? Well, I think this is, this is one, of the, one of the biggest challenges going forward because I think you and I and a whole bunch of other people, we know that almost every, almost every single modern day or man-made disease is, is because of the impact of stress. Sure. Now, whether that's stress at the moment, whether that's stress from way back or whether it's ancestral stress that, we, that we've carried with us. So... I think what we, we live in a world just now where being healthy isn't profitable. So there is, you know, so the government, when the government sees this, um, and it would be really easy for me to just now to go into this, you know, to, to have a wee bit of a rant about Big Pharma. Um, but yeah. but it, it's, not, it's not the time the place for it. But at the moment, um, when I look at this, you know, when I look at this from a, we're so into, we're, I was thinking about this, and my wife had to phone the doctor for something last week. And she came off the phone so angry and a, little, and a little bit upset because she's saying, I don't want medicated for it. You know, this physical thing that's going on. She said, I don't want medicated for it. I want to get to the root of it. She right. says, because yes, we can, get a, we, we can get these little pills and, you know, the pills cost 15 pence per pill to make and there's, then there's all the stuff that goes on top of that. She says, but I want to know how to get rid of it so that I can, because we, are, we, we have a, quite a healthy household um, and we we don't have a stressless household, but it's definitely a it's definitely a lot lower than what I would imagine a lot of other people would be. But 
we do live. I mean, that is the the, the story about the rats. I completely, I completely chime with that because every addict that I have ever worked with, when I get into the story part with them and I ask them, you know, if you could actually just summarize, why do you think that you got into drugs? Why did you, because we can do the blame thing, as I mentioned earlier on, sure. we can blame my brother was into it, my dad was into it, it was dead easy to get. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you become accountable for it, every single one of them say, because I wanted to feel something different. Right. I want to feel something other than what I was feeling at that time. Right. If you're, if you're, taking, if you're taking heroin, you will not feel poverty in that moment. If you're taking heroin, you will not feel depression in that moment. It's, right. And it doesn't last long, but by you taking that shot or if you put some stuff up your nose or whatever it is you take, addicts, they, you know, addicts are, are always, they're just trying to feel different. And partly, and again, we can blame the whole society, societal ladder and stuff like that, but they have been put in that box. Sure. And it's and it's why and it's and I feel privileged when I get in when I get to work with these people because I learn so much from them. Um, there is a real leadership, you know, and and people who are coming through addiction. There is a real potential. I've had some of the the most amazing guest speakers I've had in programs have been people who have who have come through and battled addiction yeah. only to come out of an absolute hero because they're doing things very very different. It's one of the most toughest things to do is to come through addiction and, and be the hero in it. But I think the I think the other thing. Um, I think the other part of this is the the expectation that pe- the expectation that we have of the the kind of societal needs societal needs for these people because we can see it we have it everywhere we have it in Glasgow Edinburgh we, you know you see it in Camden you see it in London um, and we have this almost this need to go yeah oh I cut, you know these people come from the from the bad area and there is not there is not enough being done to allow them to realise that. You can invest all the money in the world to regenerate sure. an area, but it has to be the investment has to be in the people, not in the not in the shops, not in the shopping centre, not in the, right. the housing. It helps a little bit, but the investment has to be in in the in the people. Yeah, absolutely right. Because the, the I, I totally hear you, and what you're talking about addiction is so, so to the point. You know, in a sense, we're all addicted. It's just like you know, change your addiction to something that is benign. And, and really gets you, I mean, you know, it's like, um, I mean, you, you're, you're a fine musician. I've, I've, I've heard you play and, and, you know, and you say, well, why does anybody want to do, you know, the, the, the I'm afraid to say, go back to sort of uh, government guidelines of trying to get everybody to be productive rather than creative. Well, why? Because the creative creates within us an addiction. You know the 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 well. Why do you why do you paint? Why do you make music? Why do you why do you think creatively? Why do you live creatively? Because yeah. I'm addicted to it, and I think it's changing our addictions to ones that are benign. I'm addicted to to hanging out with people, just having a chat on a street corner. I don't give a shit who they are, you know. Because why? Because I feel good. Is, yeah. I, why do I want to smile at someone? Because I'm a buffoon? Because I'm insane? Because I feel fucking good. The payoff, you know, you, so <laughs> the profit of life is not what you take, it's what you give. Absolutely. Because you can't, you can't take a no. fucking thing with you anyway. <laughs> I, I, one, of the, one of the last programs that I ran before lockdown really hit in the last year, this was, this was the beginning of February, and I was working in a... Um, I think it was, it was the Gorbals in Glasgow, and I had a group, um, all recovering addicts. Most of them, I think eight out of the 10 were on a methadone right. program. Wow. Um, and it can be quite tricky working with people on methadone, depending on what time of day they get their medication and stuff like that. And what I'd, what I'd said to some of the guys was, we need to get we need to get this, this done in the, at the right time of day, because I don't want you to be in pain. I don't want you to be in discomfort. Um, I says, but if, you ha- if you're gonna have your methadone before you come, before you come in the session, I'm just going to ask that you don't take anything else that is going to blur your mind for this. So I know some of you guys are, you know, you've admitted you're topping up and stuff, or you're maybe taking some diazepam or some Valiums and stuff to manage the pain and yeah. stuff. I suspect. I just said, all I'm going to ask is that you're aw- you're as, as humanly aware as possible. And it was fine, and that's what they did. They would, you know, they would take what they needed to take, and we would arrive for the session. Um, and the sessions were only, so they were supposed to be three hours a day for five days, consecutive days, so that we could start building up a little bit of a habit. And there wasn't one session that was shorter than five and a half hours, just because the conversation was so rich. But one of the things we got, we got to the end of the end of the day, it was the Friday, and people were, they were graduating the programme. Um, 
and this, this lad came up to me, 25, 24, 25 years old, lovely lad, Brian, his name is, and he says, um, he said, I've got a book for you, Mark. He says, this, this whole Best of You program has been fucking incredible. He says, I love this idea of just, wow. you know, putting blame to the side and becoming accountable for stuff. And he says, I promise you the next time you see me, he says, I'm going to be off methadone. And, and, he, and he really, really meant it. Wow. But he gave me this book and he said, this book for me sums up what you've been talking about. And the book was called Lost, it was called Lost Connections. Um, and I think I read it in two days. I read it in one of these books that I just couldn't put it down, partly because he gave it to me, but I also wanted to be authentic. So when I went back and saw him over a cup of coffee, I could say I've read the book. But the thing about this book, Lost Connections, and um, and I recommend anyone, you know, anyone of any background to read this book because the real, I suppose that you know, to sum it up in just one sentence is when we're talking about people who are who are addicts, they say the op the opposite of addiction isn't non-addiction. The opposite of addiction is connection. Sure. And it's just as and this is the things that I had the, the absolute pleasure and the privilege That's of having these these guys, you know, nominated and sent to me for that for this program. And we had it penciled in again. It was supposed to be from like eleven to two each day. And then half four would roll by and the guys are going, fuck, I need to go and get my bus man or I need to go and get my, my kids from school and that kind of thing. Um, but what, what I noticed was as long as we managed to get a little coffee break and a fag break in the middle of it to go and you know to you know to prepare ourselves for what we're going to talk about in the afternoon, when I was looking at the evaluation, and the evaluation isn't one of these, you know, here's a bit of paper, how was the venue, how was the fucking sausage rolls kind of thing. The evaluation is very much about, you know, what did you hope to get out of this? How might we use this? How can we help other people? That kind of thing. Um, and when I went home that night. I poured myself a big, you know, a big pot of coffee, and I went through all the evaluation, and every single page had the word connection on it at least like five to ten times. I felt connected. Right. You know, the sessions were double the length they should be because I had such a connection to what to that person's story. You know, why do you, you know, how might you? There was a question which was posed, which is about how you know how might you pay this forward to someone else, and people were saying just to connect to them. Yeah. So this side, this idea is, you know. And it's when you when you look at heroin addicts, a lot of them they, they go about in pairs, or there's maybe three or four of them. Right. Yeah, there's not a lot of solo heroin addicts around there. There's not a lot of people that go, they get it, and they take it in their own. There are some, but most of them do it yeah. in pairs, friends, whatever. Again, because it's that community connection thing. Right. So I think there is there's something really really powerful, and it really it depends on what your addiction is. But I know for a fact that. A lot of the people that I work with is that their healing comes from starting to feel connected to something bigger than yes. themselves. Yes, that's right. No, I, I think that the, the community is, you know, without it, we fall to pieces. And this is, this is the thing about isolating people. As soon as you isolate people who are tribal or who are community based, they get ill. It, it's, it's a fact. We, we know this to isolate somebody, but we naturally make community. And to use community, I think, you know, for me, this is, this is the, this is the, if there is a future for humankind, I believe there is. Whatever happens right now, whatever's going on, and I'm not going to get into any of that, it'll be through community. I think the work that you're doing, the work that I'm doing, the work that we're involved with, it's not a work, it's a passion. Because there's, yeah. there's nothing more enjoyable, actually, than, than getting together and just sharing and you start to see, hmm, you, you know, you sit in a circle with people and you, you look at all these people there, you think they're all different. They all look different. They've got different stories. And then you find that at least five or six people have the same opinion as, as you. Five or six people have the same fears as you. You know, you think, well, who am I? Well, who are you? Who am I? Who, who's David Sai? David Sai is just a name. I identify David Sai by history. But actually, if you gave me amnesia, I wouldn't know who the fuck I am. You yeah. know, <laughs> I wouldn't know. So, but what gives me pleasure? Well, I'm getting pleasure right now just sharing with you, brother, you know, and talking about stuff that is real, stuff that's sustainable. You know, I had um, just uh, just uh, recently, just some, some woman, she was a, she's living on the street. and I went to the bank, I took some money, and then she was, she was, standing behind me when I turned around and she went, hi. And I went, okay. So I gave her some of this money and she went, oh, top man. And she gave me a big hug and 
oh god she's stinky she hadn't washed for it for for weeks christ and obviously she was stinky you know who wouldn't be but yeah. i floated up the street you know i felt so fucking good you know that was amazing and as i walked up parkway there was a guy <laughs> it was hysterical he was in in a gold lamborghini i've never seen anything like it in my life and he was sitting there and he was so pissed off you know he's sitting there like this in a gold lamborghini and i'm i'm you know, I'm, my feet aren't even touching the ground and I ain't got two pennies to rub together. And he's, he's like, he's got it all happening, you know, but the difference between us and, you know, was, was profound. And I was thinking, yeah, you got everything and you got nothing. So you yeah. can own it all. Um, and you can't take a th you can't take anything with you. So you say, well, what, what, what am I really trying to do? And then you think of, you think of the, you know, the, 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 the old philosophies and, you know, even what Christ said, you know, gathering treasure in heaven. What does that mean? Yeah. Being able to feel pleased with yourself, no matter what happens, you know, they, they, the, the Buddha was dying and they said, you know, all of his, all of his uh, uh, followers were gathered around the bed and they said, uh, are you God? He's, he's like minutes to go. He says, no. They said, are you the prophet? He says, no. They said, are you an angel? He says, no. They said, well, who are you? He said, I'm awake. You know, being awake to who we are and seeing who we are and valuing that, it's, it's one of the big, you know, that's, that's, I've seen you do this in front of kids, you know, just because you're awake and the exemplification um, and living that example rather than just, I mean, we're talking now, but rather than talking, because words are cheap. It's, you know, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing to, to make you feel good on your own without anybody else acknowledging you? Yeah. So you, yeah. you become the source of that goodness, not yeah. some God out there, not some religion in a, in a church or a mosque or a synagogue, not some, not some royalty giving you some, you know, knighthood or accolade just you yeah. you know that i think that's a great gift and, and it's one that your work definitely passed that on to me seeing seeing what you're doing emphasized the importance of that and i was so excited to to have you and on this this you know little chat and and be able to just share to share with that one last thought brother to to just before we we split and 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 what is for you in the human condition and about the future we're moving into now? Is there one thing that's a really important bit of clarity for people going through dark times that their, their lives are falling apart, their businesses don't function anymore? I mean, I got people in the street corner here with restaurants, you know, who've worked all their lives and they can't yeah. open, they're falling to pieces. What 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 do what do we share with these people? How do we? Is there something that you could, you know? I mean, it's a big question I'm putting to you, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. But I think there's, yeah. you know, I think there's probably two things, and it's the one thing I've been spending a lot of time these last few months, you know, having having supportive conversations with people that are reaching out and they want to have these Zoom conversations because we can't meet in person, and and they're looking for answers and stuff like that. And I must admit, I really. I really like some of the questions that have been asked because to answer your question, there is something that I think part one is just stay curious about everything. Be curious about what you can yet become because I know someone, I know someone not too far from here who, you know, who has run the same business for 27, 27 or 28 years and there is going to be no return for it. They just, they, they, they can't, they're not going to be able to do it anymore. And this is someone who's like, I think they're 50, you know, late fifties and wow. they plan to retire when they're 60. I made this conversation and I said, so at the moment, you now don't know how. So in your head, you're going two more years of work, retire at 60, and then I can chill. And I said to him, with the greatest respect, I says, and I, I love you dearly, I know you quite well, I says, but that sounds boring as fuck. I says, if you live, let's say, I mean, you, this is a very, very healthy person, you know, doesn't, doesn't suffer from too much stress or worry apart from the stuff we went through with their business. And I'm kind of going, imagine what it'd be like, what, see if you lived until you were 100 years old, right? because it is possible, right? Let's say you live to 100 years old. That means that when you retire in two years, you can have 40 years ahead of you. 
and and you're kind of going, oh, well, I was just going to put my feet up and chill and reap the benefits of, of what my business had done. And I'm going, I says, you just need to paint a different picture. Do you know, this is, this is, how many stories have we had from the past when people right. have had the rug pulled from under them and they've had to adopt the one thing that human beings do better than any species in the world, and that is to be creative. Right. We are the most, we are the most resilient and creative beings in the world, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm, don't get me wrong, there's, there's amazing people do, do things out there, but there's something about um, when, when things are really, really down and right. we don't know what to do. And bearing in mind, in, in the year 2021, we are now more innovative, more creative and more um, evolved than we have ever been. So right. if you want, if you think about standing on the shoulders of giants and everything that has brought us to this point, there is no better time than this to happen than now because of how we will get over it. Right. So I don't say that through blind optimism. So I think there is something about be curious about what you're going to do next because it was never going to be a given that we were that it was going to unfold the way we thought it was going to be. Right. That's and I think that, and I do think it's the other thing. You know, I'm I'm not a religious person in in any way, shape, or form, but I, I've been a spiritual person for as long as I can remember, and I do remember been forced a couple of times to go to Sunday school and be given this little cartoon version of the Bible which we had to read and then um, and I read it and I was I was fascinated by the stories you know but the, the one thing I remember someone I don't even know who it was but it was someone said to me if you were to sum up the Bible you know this cartoon I was like nine years old I was more interested in reading the Bible and Doctor Strange you know but I'm, I'm <laughs> I was describing and feeding back to the group this nine-year-old version of what the Bible was about. And I says, is it not really simple? Is it not just doing about doing more for other people than you would for yourself? And that's that's all I had to say. And, and you know, and there was a lot of people around the, the, the class kind of laughed and giggled and, you know, took the piss a little bit. But I thought, I thought that's what I thought it was about. Right. And I think even, even in this time when we, when some people have been stripped of their their livelihood, they feel like they've been stripped of their future, is that there is, you know, I, I do believe in good karma. You know, I believe yes. in karma. I believe what we've, what we've put out there. If you're worried about what you've put out there in the past is going to come around, then you can still change it because That's we're right. still here. So the karma is following the line. So to, to find the karma, you follow the line that, that gives you innately the pleasure, joy. And and, and it, it's, it's this is an interesting point, actually, what you're saying, because... It's one step at a time. The, the, the path reveals itself when you put your foot down. You can't see the path till you, till you lift your foot up and put it down. Maya Angela talked about, you know, how do you, how do you make a journey? She said, just pick them up and put them down, pick them up and put them down. You know, so the, the path reveals itself. And, and anything that gives you pleasure uh, by giving other people pleasure will give you pleasure. And it's, it's a funny thing, this. By doing that, you... This, something comes you you might call it the hand of god whatever you want to call it however you want to interpret it but is this is this idea of what is pleasing because look you know i i agree with you brother you know that it, we, our time on earth is is limited it's very limited we only have a few years we don't even know how long we have but yeah. however long we have whilst we're here at least enjoy the experience to to the degree you can, and it's it's through the creative. This is the this is the great gift of the artist, and why they try for me they to try to stop the creative mind, to make us productive, and we end up being incredibly miserable. So I, I'm I'm all about the creative. I'm all about people saying, well, what is artistic? Maybe it's just artistic to love your kids. Maybe it's artistic yeah. to go fishing, or if you can't go fishing, just watching, you know, uh, uh, wildlife, you know, I've, I've just recently got into counting how many foxes are, are moving around London. They're incredible. People say, oh God, yeah. you know, look at these foxes. Well, meanwhile, they'll you know, be overrun by rats if it wasn't for the foxes. So God bless yeah. them. And they look, they're beautiful. Um, but whatever is creative takes you on a journey. And I think that's, but that's the risk. You, this is where the courage comes in. The courage yeah. to say, it's my life you know, and it's nobody else's. And I own this. I have an owning of myself, my life. And that's what I pass on to my children's children's children. I only pass that on. That's, that's what, finally, they'll forget about me. They'll forget about the way I looked, what I sounded like, and all that crap. 
but they'll remember the the storylines and and that's what we pass on and it's uh this is the wisdom of the ages and i think this is why the old the old texts and the study of of the old stories is it was passed on through tribal systems always it was always told the storytelling um and that's what i love that you do you you, you pass on that tradition and and just want to thank you so much for for this time and 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 your love to your family i can't wait to meet you and bring my my lady up to meet you and she's dying to meet uh-huh. you guys and and i told her about our drive through glencoe and yeah that was, oh, it was incredible so we have to do that again that would be amazing Please. that would be great get up to the sky that would be great so mark just thank you and and uh uh just just uh we're going to put your your uh, business and your contacts and all that stuff at the end so if people want to contact you they can all right love to your family man thank you so much thank you. <laughs> bye for now cheers